All right, if you just joined us, you're still watching Enterprise on Morning Reaching You from Enterprise Television. Let's go to our main conversation for today. The Nigerian Bar Association, NBA, has urged the Attorney General of the Federation AGF, Latif Fawemi SAN, and the Office of the National Security Advisor, NSA, Nuhuri Badu, to conduct an independent investigation into allegations made by blogger Martin Otse Vincent, known as a Very Dark Man, that some officers of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, collected 15 million naira from controversial cross-dresser Idris Okuneye, popularly known as Bob Risky, to dismiss money laundering charges against him. In a statement on Wednesday, NBA President Afano Sigwe said, AFCC officers found culpable must be dismissed and prosecuted. AFCC Chairman Ola Olukoyode had ordered an investigation into bribery allegations levied against some officers of the commission and invited Bob Risky and Very Dark Man. Very true. And in a viral video, the Very Dark Man alleged that Bob Risky paid a 15 million naira to the anti-graft agency to drop money laundering charges against him during his naira spraying ordeal in April, after which a court sentenced him to six months imprisonment. The blog also alleged that Bob Risky paid some millions of naira to secure a choice place in prison. Bob Risky has since denied the allegations, while the EFCC and the Nigerian Correctional Service NCOS have ordered investigations into the allegations by the blogger. Very well said. All right, so let's get into the crux of the matter today. And of course, um, to discuss it is and more, we have uh, joining us virtually from Lagos in Nigeria, Alesta Wilkes. He is a public affairs uh, commentator. Good morning to you, Alesta. Good morning, Alesta. Yes, good morning for everyone. It's my pleasure. I hope you can hear me clearly. Very, very well. well. So very well. And also in the studios with us, we have uh, Mr. Peters, Sean Dinde. He's a public affairs analyst and a social commentator. Good morning to you, Peters. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so very much. And of course, we have um, Barrister Van Sofeli, a barrister, law and public affairs uh, analyst. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank good you morning. so very much. All right, so let's get into the crux of the matter here. And... Um, I'd love to start with you, Alesta. What do you make of this, especially as it connects um, the EFCC and, of course, the allegation leveled against them? Well, thanks for having me. I think it's quite a, a, a good topic to be on the front banner of all um, media, media organizations. And I don't just want this matter to just uh, rise up just like an uh, oasis and then the next thing it dies up. I will appeal that uh, Enterprise TV should keep this matter on the front burner and get some and do more of investigative journalism and get the facts clearly. Because the truth of the matter is, our agencies are in deep trouble hmm. because of the incidences of corruption. Even the agencies that are made to fight corruption have found themselves immersed in corruption. Now, let me say this: I'm not saying that the regulation is true or not. I also want to wait until. Uh, the EFCC or whoever comes out with their own report. Mm. But if you ask me, I'm not expecting anything different from denial, even in the report that is going to come out, because we've passed this through this show so many times. Um, look, why are we having problems today in Nigeria? Is because people that are saddled with responsibilities do not see it as a service, as a KPI. And there are no clear KPIs, and people are pretty much see that their successes in delivery of their mandate is their KPI. Now, Nigeria, we all have uh, at the back of our mind our, our default mood is anywhere we are, it's a better way to make money. So, corruption continues to be very, very potent in our in our lives. That is why they, today the anti graft agencies, their success rate is so low. And sometimes it's laughable. The kind of uh, success rate they, 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 they think they brought up, and the kind of things that comes up thereafter. This is one case that I think uh, Nigerians, not just the MP, you now making sh shouting, and then at the end of the day, the matter is shot on the carpet. This is one case that I want Nigerians to think to the last post stop. So, no, if truly what, what Bogodisk is saying happened, and I'm not in doubt that it might have happened, because all of a sudden, Six count charges were dropped, two counts were dropped. What were the incidents that led to that drop of those charges? And 
person will get slap in the wrist, uh, uh, slap in the wrist judgment, six months imprisonment, and then it's also alleged that the man never spent it in the national center. That's also allegation, but it's not uh, it's somewhere. So the country is in their need of sanitization. And let me commend the uh, uh, enterprise TV, and I hope you think this fight on until we get to the bottom of the matter. Let me yield the floor to my other uh, colleagues. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Um, Barrister Evans Sufili. Now, um, what does this mean for the legal system? Because these allegations would affect public trust. And how does it go far to affect public trust in the law enforcement and legal system? Well, it's not the legal system per se. It's the criminal justice system. You can see that every, every angle to it is sick. Mm. Everyone is sick. The prison, they are sick. The EFCC, that's also the prosecutor, has been accused, tells you that they are sick too. Um, the controller general, I don't know why the public, I don't know why you are surprised. I don't know why you are surprised. For we lawyers, we have seen these things consistently. We have been talking about it. For prison, well, it does not matter what the sentence is or whatever it is, so long as you have money. And you give money to prison warders. They will prepare VIP lodge for you in the prison there. They can even give you an extension outside. I know of um, someone who was convicted, who served uh, seven years imprisonment. He used to go out with his car. <laughs> he goes out and come back. He built a chapel inside the Kirikiri prison, maximum prison. Then I used to go and see my clients. If you give, if you have an inmate in prison and you, you send 50,000 to that inmate to feed and all that, the inmate will get less than 20,000. Mm. The warders, they have hierarchies of who they, those monies will go through to distribute it. I had a suspect sometime that I defended in court the day he was remanded at the prison. I gave the warder money to give him. I gave the order 5,000 naira to give him. But so when he came out, he told me that he got 800 naira. I'm just telling you, you see, you see this prison custody. Because the light is not always flash at that point. That is the most uh, corrupt institution in Nigeria. That is for the prison. Now for EFCC, I'm not saying the allegation is true or false as it relates to them. But I know that they collect money. I was in detention in EFCC. My cell is M1. Ten days. I knew what I saw there. In fact, when I came out, I went to meet a colleague of my lawyer. That's why I'm very happy that this is happening. I told him, see what I saw at the EFCC. I never knew. He told me that I shouldn't even go there. That has been, it's been a decay right from time. Mm -hmm. I said, what can we do to, to bring this matter to the front burner? We we're brainstorming on what to do to have credible evidence and to showcase when this thing came out. Now, this one is an allegation. Whichever way they want. See, they should order for independent investigation. ESCC should not investigate this matter. Mm. ESCC should not investigate it. Because the likelihood of, the likelihood of, um, you know, closing up gaps is very high if the institution, because what will happen is that that will, if they, if they do a thorough job and it turns out to be true, it will discredit the institution. Before now, all this issue of bribery and corruption in, in, is, is, has been a, a figment of the public's imagination. Mm -hmm. You've not seen it. This is somebody on call said this is what happened. You understand? What I think should be done is an, an independent institution to investigate. And for the ESCC to be calling both parties to come at this stage, I don't think that is also right. You see that case? There's an IPO attached to that case. Okay? There's a team that that case was assigned to for prosecution. And you have the record. So it's not one thing you start to call these people to come. You know what to do. Pick the file. Summon the team and investigate them. That's what should be done at this stage. I'm not saying it's true or it's false, but the probability is very high that things like this could happen under 
the EFCC has currently constituted. Mm, very true. And the public should not be that so surprised mm. at what is going on. For prisons, those ones are condemned already. <laughs> I am very cocksure. I was on TVC last night and I told the, the public life that I'm aware I know about that one very well. So I'm not I'm not guessing there. The ESCC, I'm giving a little bit of benefit of doubt because I didn't see when it was given mm -hmm. and collected. Well, there are instances where I saw they collected money. They collect money. Yes, they collect money. They collect money. They should come and stand before the deity and swear, or to the Almighty with Bible and swear that they don't collect money. <laughs> they should swear. What to change this country? We are finished already, and we think we are just uh, we can we can just keep patching it. We are finished if we don't take care of these issues. There will be no country left for our children if we don't take care of this, these issues. Very true. So what we think about changing the country, having an overhaul for the country, uh, Peters, let, let me ask you, the whistleblowing policy in, in Nigeria is, is true and all that. But let's talk about the very dark man, of course, the, 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 the blogger who has brought it to the open. And uh, the, the question is, how do we better safeguard whistleblowers such as a very dark man? Because he's doing honorable job because without him this wouldn't have been in the open or it would have been managed to an extent that it wouldn't have blown out of the proportion going forward how do we guard such kind of people um so as to um hold the feet of those in authority um a culpable yeah thank you uh, for the question uh, i think the lawyers there i think there's even a new one uh, on whistleblowing uh, sponsored by the ministry of finance uh for Financial crimes, if you know anybody who has stolen money, uh, just mention it. This is how we'll cover you. But again, uh, there's also another angle to it because uh, some people are looking at the profits from whistleblowing and they don't have uh, concrete evidence. So you need to balance this. Okay. But for the case of very dark man, uh, this is not whistleblowing. It's not whistleblowing. This is uh, like uh, an allegation in the sense that uh, you have perceived, because up to now, as we speak, if you hear his uh, release this morning, uh, he has uh, come out to say, I'm not defaming anybody. I am only saying what I received. You don't till now, it's still an allegation. In fact, the person he alleged to have uh, been the person on the call, making those calls has denied mm. that it's not me. So as it is now, it's a developing story. Uh, no parties, you can't prove anything now. You think it's an expose, you think it's a whistleblowing. You whistleblow something, you are very sure mm. that's come. I have evidences to back this up that yes, uh, this man actually stole this money or move from A to B. You see, uh, just like uh, Alexis and the barrister here said, uh, our systems are messed up. Check almost all the EFCC chairman that has left after Ribado. There is, they're always leaving either is if I Waziri, Lamode, Magu. It, it, it has to be corruption. It's either they are accused of uh, selling assets, they have recovered, uh, helping suspects here and there. If we know that the system is messed so if you hear little ones collecting 50 million, it shouldn't surprise anybody. Mm -hmm. Because it falls from the top. Look at the Nigerian prison. I have experiences of the prisons too, like I said. But you see, we know the system is corrupt. But where this one, the dimension this one is taking mm -hmm. now, I just want a situation whereby we are able to prove. Just like the barrister said, do I disagree that the EFCC cannot order an investigation? They cannot make allegations mm -hmm. against you, especially if you are the head of EFCC mm -hmm. and you know nothing about it. Of course you will go for an investigation. You just want to hear from both sides so that uh, even if anything that happens, I know to punish. You can't just sit down and say, okay, they have said it. The AGF has been ordered by NBA to investigate. Uh, Nigerian Coast the Minister of uh, Internal Affairs has started to do an investigation. Uh, I know prisons will do that. Everybody will try to be busy. But you see, in Nigerian prisons, we know the cell of Mustafa State, the cell of uh, Ayofayoshi State, the cell of Bodejo State cannot be the same cell. A criminal would even be staying. They have VIP section there. So it is wrong to have a VIP section in a uh, correction. It's not in our laws. I, I, I do not work for the national police. It's not in our laws. It's wrong. I don't know. I don't know what it is there. But we know in this country, 
that they did they do not live in the same cell as they bring food for them we see videos when they are always happy in the prisons doing this and that but people briskly said okay i gave them money we saw some videos but the main thing here is i just want a situation whereby uh, after all these investigations if it will start a change in the system yeah. because you see a system that is bad somebody is not telling you it's bad somebody collected it's not news yeah. but will this thing start a revolution can we start to the man in here says is a pastor can you now use this opportunity yeah. to start to reform yeah. correctional center can you use this opportunity to reform the case i know in the prisons there are people there your offense, disobedience or something, okay, pay 50,000, pay 20,000. Nobody will pay for them. And they have been in prison for years. Okay, somebody, now, okay, let me pay for these people. Give me about 20 names. Let me just pay. I think I have compassion on them. Then prison officials will tell you, that. before you pay for these people, this is our own. Mm. You can imagine. Hmm. So, you see, we know the system is messed up. Hmm. My own is, after all this investigation, what comes out of it. Nigeria is never tired of investigation. There's always one committee or the other mm -hmm. to investigate anything in any phase. But after the whole thing, what is the result? Thank you, Peters. Um, Alesta, now we're talking about um, this um, different institutions. Now we need to talk about the reforms. What reforms might be necessary to address the systematic issues in Nigerians' prosecutional and correctional um, system, as highlighted by the situation, because this situation has just blown some things to the open for some layman to actually understand. So, can we hear your view on that? Well, if you ask me, now who I will ask, according to the, according to the uh, popular Nigerian palace, mm. and uh, I know uh, my very much must agree with me at this point because I've always said something every day in this country. We think the only man that has his key or the magic one to solve all our problems is the president. And I have always come to the point that the president, in fact, is the last man. He has the box up on his table, but he's the last man in terms of bringing change in this country. Whatever change we are talking about, it is you and I that are the Nigerians. You know, each time I go to church and, and they say, pray for Nigeria, I don't, I don't pray again. I've not prayed for Nigeria. When I come back, Pastor, I said, Pastor, who is Nigeria? What is Nigeria? I think what we should be talking about is let's pray for Nigerians. Because the Nigerians can look up Nigeria. And leadership or governance is in every strata, at every level. Now, the man in Saudi with the concept of a prison is not the president. The president does not run prison. The man Saudi with the responsibility of crime management or uh, the, 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 well, uh, what do you call it now? The justice, criminal justice system. He's not the president. There is a man starting with that responsibility. EFCC was established in order for us to curb the instance of corruption. Now, EFCC now becomes part of the corrupt system. So who will bear the cards? And so there is very little to if we, as the happy responsibility, do not, do not get ourselves to know that Nigeria is a good job for all of us. Because where you have the, you see, I, I, I see, I see a uh, justice, uh, uh, a policeman in other jurisdictions. Their pride is to get criminals convicted. That's what they say that they go overboard. So they say they go overboard to, to really, because they want their KPI to be measured on the number of criminals they get convicted. You see agencies, Warning your task center because of one criminal to ensure that that criminal is brought to justice. But the reverse is the case in Nigeria. The moment you walk into a police station, the moment you walk into a police station, the man on the desk see you as a potential money, uh, that is, money has come in. His lunch is guaranteed that day. You came to make a statement, to make a report. My car was stolen or something. The man, as he walked in, the man that sees you as his breakfast or his lunch has arrived. So every other thing is, is every other thing, uh, right statement, this is, is not a secondary issue. The first issue is that his lunch has arrived. And so so in EFCC. I, I agree with uh, with with uh, with, with the bans. I've had incidences, I've had to go to EFCC offices. I've not been a victim, I've not been arrested before. 
but I'm happy we arrested. And I know how much that goes out every day to the plaintiffs in order for either the man gets lunch or the man gets visitors or the man so just so things like that. So if that is the mindset, how will you how will you be able to discharge that responsibility? Because it's a sacred duty. So I am not I am not you see that not, like my brother said there is no shot. Nigeria is no sort of panels or reports. The law has put the report. I'm happy that NBA is leading this investigation. But even the NBA, how honest and truthful are they as a body? How honest will they be? Because right now, I understand there is some deniers. Maybe Bobulisky is saying it's not true and all that and all that. There are some deniers. And that is where the matter will end. If Bobulisky is not prosecuted, now, this is it my, my own my own my own uh, bottom line of this issue is either for the risky and his cohort is be prosecuted for false allegation against the public officer i don't know if decree 4 has been uh, abolished if that decree has been abolished it's still potent that decree 4 i don't know the one what is it now that is lying against the public officer remember decree 4 of 1984 if that decree if that law is still existing then but risky, if, no matter the denial, if he's not charged in line with that law, lying against the public officer, or the officers, the, well, the prison, the EFCC, nobody is charged for corruption and for degrading uh, 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 the, the of institutions and be jailed. Sincerely, I will not be satisfied that justice has been done to this matter. Whatever that has to be done, to instill discipline back to our body politics, back to our country. See, this country, like the man said, is sinking by the day. The country is sinking by the day because institutions are being denigrated every day. What will our children inherit? Because if this trend continues, cash and carry a uh, country, every time everything is about money, what you make out of it, what you make out of it, what are we going to pass on? A president will come, he will go. Fine. Four years, eight years, he will go, do his own bits. The next one will come, we'll start from there that one. He will go, and then we'll come and start from there that one. Meanwhile, the institutions are the ones that are the problems. And the president the last boss is the last man. So we must find a way to restructure, no, to reshape mentality and public discourse. To be focused on institutions rather than focusing on just the president. All right. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, but sincerely speaking, we need to get we need to get we need to get something done out of this matter. There must be some examples out of this matter. Is that a is supposed to go back to jail for lying to the real jail? Or post that you are accused the FCC and the, the police and the and the prison are fished out and prosecuted. I don't think I'll be satisfied. All right, so very well said. Um, uh, by Stefan Sukali, um, uh, so many names have been uh, um, inducted in this particular case. Now, let's take a look at um, two um, important personalities. Now, these are people I want to believe that are in your area of forte. Um, um, uh, Femi Falana is a, uh, his son and the files and all. Now, Femi Falana has had um, a Teflon a career, all right, for a decade and all. Now, I love you to um, he help us explain how um, legal advice in this particular case is is there could be could there be a conflict of interest in this particular case when someone who of course is it is his responsibility to give legal advice in such a particular case where does that kind of person draw up or, or, or transition to the other side that might indict him at the end of the day well in that video in the voice call yes they were risking himself uh, alleged that Faust reached out to him. Okay? Is it him or high again? How did we show up? It's him, it's him, actually. Him, yeah. reached out to him, and they said that uh, he will inform the father, and uh, they will find a way around the situation. You understand? Now, that's what he said mm -hmm. in that first call, and that um, it's possible that they apply for pardon for him using that window you understand if you brief a lawyer mm -hmm. the lawyer will give you all the options open to you okay and a lawyer's advice cannot be crime mm -hmm. it can't be crime 
a lawyer will give you options open that you through which you can choose any that you think is most viable then very dark man made he he, he um he said that 10 million naira was released so that effect to yeah, help him get yeah. mm. pardon and all that but yesterday the chambers you know refuted that and said that um it was false that uh, fast didn't reach out to um bob risky didn't reach out to bob risky and then showed evidence that bob risky called in called fast and all that so the chamber um put out yesterday that very dark man must apologize within 24 hours failure which uh, they will proceed to court against him for defamation of character now he did not apologize he came out and denied that he didn't defame Femi Falana and Faust mm -hmm. respectively then his lawyer DJ Adeonju whom I called last night okay. and I told him tell very dark man to go and apologize I am a senior lawyer what very dark man did was defamation because he said that so Femi Falana and his son people I respect so much yes. can be involved in this. Mm -hmm. He went further to say, ah, fast, fast, I'll be fast, they do mm. homosexual, something like yeah, that. Those are defamation. Those are expressions that disparages mm. the adverse party, mm. that reduces that person in the eyes of the right thinking members of society. Mm. So as much as you have huge followership, they all absorb that. In fact, when you go to Twitter, some people under the comment section where the, uh, uh, the uh, Falana, uh, Falana's uh, letter, yeah. Chambers' letter, under under the comment section, some people were saying that Faust, the husband, don't talk. Oh. Do you understand? Now, that is the fruit mm. of defamation mm. growing. Mm. Okay, because it has been sown. Mm. Then, your lawyer now put out a letter that was not defamation that he hold from her high esteem that this that is a very wrong way to young lawyers you learn the law it does not matter how popular you are before you became a lawyer go and learn the law so don't you think they're not yes yes lord denning <coughs> learning the law is very important you cannot see you cannot know everything overnight you must learn the law. If I were the counsel in that matter, I would put up that letter. I would make it an apology letter and send straight to the chamber. Because first, once the apology is put out, it discusses the idea of going to court. Then we'll go and settle. Okay. But what they are doing, they are grandstanding. They are grandstanding. It's like saying it was never a defamation. That, but they don't know what constitutes defamation. It's measured in different, in a different, it's not, it's not, see, it's not what, well, it, it, the lawyer have done what they've taken their, they've take, made their decision. Okay. Now it's for Femme uh, Fana uh, as a law firm to do what they want to do, whether they want to prosecute for that or whether they want to, that's left for them. Yeah. You understand? But the truth is that that investigation must go on. I am not standing for Fairy Van or the Sun or Very Dark Man. Let the investigation go on. Okay. And through the investigation, you'll you be able to unravel whether or not uh, money was paid for anything or whatever it is. But what I know is that, what I know under the law is that a lawyer's advice or a lawyer's involvement in case is not free. It's not free. You pay for it. Okay. So whatever it is mm. that consider all that will come to see in, in the future what mm. it is. Well, let me also make one other remark to the prison. If you go to a Nigerian prison today, you cannot differentiate between an inmate and a prison warden. Mm. You don't know who needs reformation <laughs> or you don't know who, ne who need a, a rehabilitation between them and because they collect food meant for uh, uh, inmates. They'll take it. Whatever it is that goes to an image, they believe that they have equal right to the share of that. Mm. 
And that is why we must dim the light there. Because see, it does not matter what the court, okay, look at what the court did. Will you blame the court? What's the penalty for the offense? Six months Six imprisonment. Months. Yeah. What did the court sentence for? Six months. Six months imprisonment. So, what is the court's allegation there? The, that's why I say not the legal system, but the criminal justice system. It starts from arrest, mm. arraignment, trial, conviction, sentence, prison term. So, it's a whole chain. But what the public look at, they say the court. Which court? The court discharges responsibility. The law is six months imprisonment. That's what they grant, that's what they gave. So, but the other chain in the criminal justice system, you must look carefully through that process. And that is exactly what we need to do Thank to you. ensure that we sanitize Thank you, Mr. Evans. Now, uh, Mr. Peter, this will be our last question to you. And how does the role of social media influencers like Greg Dachman now portray um the legal proceedings and the public perception of justice? At this point, because the social media is playing a role, which in a way, if you check it, it might be positive, but they're actually portraying actually our justice system to Nigerians in a particular light. Yeah, uh, the social media is very, very important in any uh, country. All over the world, uh, social media perceptions are, uh, are very, very useful. Uh, they could be positive, but at the same time, they could be negative. Uh, for example, you see, <laughs> There's a difference between the law and sentiments. Mm. On social media, you see a lot of sentiments. Mm. Uh, just like the barrister said here just now, you have a lot of people lodging, telling that, man, go, mm. go, mm. this one. Mm. And they, they are just being sentimental. The position of the law is clear. Evil alleges must go. Mm. Now, everything is coming down to the very that one. Go and prove what you have said. To add to what the lawyer has said, he was saying, now I have lost all respect. And the so what are you, you are, you are saying you did not uh, attack their personality, you didn't assassinate their character, but what you're saying is suggestive. It is just, it, 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 you, are, you are running into conclusion. So it's not a Based POV, the, hmm? it is not a point of view in it, this matter. You see, uh, for him, yeah. if he does not take care, just like the barrister has said, apologize like the people involved have. You see, the offense, just like you said, a lawyer's opinion cannot be an offense. Okay. You have come to us, you have said, I don't want to be a convict because he got full conviction. Yeah, very yeah, true. The judge had the option of saying just go and pay 50,000. Yeah. You have seen that same offense. Yeah. You see, Kubana's chief priest. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 definitely. All of them yeah. walking away, mm. no conviction. Mm. Maybe she is feeling that, okay, as a first time offender. He I'm actually. Her lawyer advised yes. him so, or her lawyer advised him to plead guilty. Him, to plead guilty mm. Maybe he will just pay a fine. As now saying that uh, the judge used the full length of law, mm. the whole hammer on him. So he won maybe he wanted because it's Idris Okunaya mm -hmm. that was convicted. Mm. He wanted to clear his name. Mm. He doesn't want to be a convict. For posterity. So, who do I meet? Okay, let me reach out to files. I want my name out of and as a professional, you offer your service. Mm -hmm. You say, okay, this is my price. That is not a crime. So now you portraying it. I don't want to drift away from what you've said, what the question. Mm -hmm. You see, social media is good, it's important. You see a lot in Kenya, in South Africa, how social media mm -hmm. brings quick resolutions to things. Even in Nigeria, mm. you see the government sometimes when they see mm. even the last election, you can see you see what social media did to Labour Party. So, social media is good. But at mm. the same time, it must be within the ambit of the law. You cannot say because you have freedom of expression, you use it to uh, accuse others. Let us play within very that man might be doing a whole lot of good jobs here and there. But at the same time, it's not everything you see, you jump okay. on and you begin to immediately, or even if it is more yeah. risky, he didn't come out himself to just come and allege and say, okay, well, I'm publishing this thing out. You that saw it, at least if you know files, you can reach out to people yeah. like that and confirm things before you go out. So social media is good for everybody, for the government, for, now the president is trying to change cabinet. Mm -hmm. Go to social media and see what people people's view. All the ministers that they expect should go. That is it. 
If government is sincere, they can go there and pick information from there. It's not difficult to run a country. Just feel the pulse of the people. And you can mm. feel it mm. through the social back. media. Back. It's one way of getting in. Just run a pool and you well. see it, you see that. So social media is good, but people should not exploit that opportunity of freedom to also mess up themselves. Mm. All right, beautiful. Um Alexa, just before we drop our anchor in 60 seconds, if you may, no gang saying Nigeria needs extreme overhaul if that is possible where should it start first if we don't overhaul our criminal justice system and make it more rigorous for offenders to just walk away freely then we're most of us scratching the surface i think first and foremost is any any country that does not pay premium to to to, to law and order and to punish the uh, uh, behavior bad behavior uh, then that country has not started with any new social order. That is that is the beginning point. Right now we have had this uh, anyway, Idris uh, Idris Bobiski's issue has thrown light on the the evil of uh, spraying money. So I'm sure that has been a bit of corruption has taken place in that in that in that in that space now. So he has also opened a new a new can as per his prison how dirty the prison, how 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 the cancer of the prison service is. That also should I mean so he's not uh, uh, doing the place. I mean I mean I mean trying to set some some standards for the country to follow. So EFCC must be investigated to know if they're actually doing their work or they're using their offices, their positions as a conduit pipe. Not like my brother said, all the EFCC chairmen that have come apart from doing the have all left a terrible and much in corruptions. So that means it's a systemic thing. It's not just operative. It goes right up to the top of, the, of, of that institution. So something drastic needs to be, need, need, need to be done. And so if Babuliski is opening, is helping Nigerians to open our eyes to evils that need to be corrected, so be it. It has to be corrected. And ensure that Nigeria runs as a, as a responsible, safe country they can start making progress in other areas. Thank, Thank you. you so very much. Yes, uh, Brother Stefan Suveli, your take home. Yeah, I think for the EFCC, Rebago and Waziri, I think that Waziri is also excluded from that corruption rank, mm. the woman. Okay. Her own was all transit she made on TV that led the Jonathan's administration to take her down. From Waziri down to all of them being corruption, corruption and all that. So the end point for me is that I am not so comfortable with those who are saddled with this responsibility to investigate this matter. Mm. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. For the prison, the Minister for Interior, you know, made that expression. They are going to investigate. What is it, what is this investigation going to look like? Is it going to use the police to investigate it or use the prison orders? Prison orders cannot mm. investigate anything. I'm telling you, I know them, or I, I interface with them one-on-one. -on -one. They cannot investigate anything. They are too porous. So how is he going to investigate it? That is my question. Then for the EFCC, we should get an independent body to do that investigation. And who do you think should be the best independent body here? Yeah. Well, I don't want to call the police because the police are no go area. You can see how decay we are. I don't know who to call on to go and do the investigation. Whether it's the DSS or whether it's who, whether it falls within the purview or all that. But see, this whole thing, we need an independent body to look into this matter. That's the only way you can get objectivity. The head of the EFCC will not investigate this matter. Come up, find out the truth, and then come and tell you and I. Mm. Because it discredit the institution. Mm. Mm. Well, so you know what it is now. Uh, you, you cannot be a judge in your own case. Very well. You understand? Mm. Uh, no more that quad non in Kasasua. You cannot be a judge in your own case. You understand? You can't do that. Mm. So at the end of the day, what you have is... If you unravel the truth and the truth will indict the institution mm. as a leader, you won't see that as your responsibility to state that to the public, irrespective of the fact that it discredits <laughs> you. It will be difficult to do that. Thank you. So let a third party, an independent body, uh, we don't have private investigators in Nigeria, but uh, if it had been some other places, perhaps they could be involved in, uh, involved in this matter and deal with the issue. Thank you very much, Ivan. Mr. Yeah. Peter, let's get your partnership. That's the second. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, I will also go back to the law. You see, oh. uh, in Nigeria, the law 
is very, very strong against the weak people, mm -hmm. are very weak against the strong people. Mm -hmm. You see, if you see the logo of the, should I say the law logo now? Maybe by mm -hmm. that will help me. You see, okay, the, mm -hmm. the, the justice, the yeah. justice yeah. cover the highs. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. in Nigeria, it's not like that. The highs is just, <laughs> with, with the binoculars on. And who is that poor man? Until you have the laws being fully respected and does not see a big man from a poor man. Mm -hmm. You look at the United States now, the son of the president might go to jail. Yeah. The Biden Jr. Yeah. You can see Shandy the Under the comms, yeah. No, goes, you cannot be bigger than the law. Mm. Here, that is our problem. We are all bigger than the law. Between me and you, if we fight now, do you know who I am? Mm. Do you know who I know? You call somebody mm. and mm. things begin to happen. So just like uh, Mr. Wilcox said, the system itself, all of us Nigerians, until we learn to change, if we cannot change the system, mm -hmm. until we ourselves decide that, okay, it starts with me, then the system will just be made. Very well said. I just sincerely hope that this won't be swept under the carpet anytime yeah. soon. Yes, I'd love to say thank you to Alexa uh, Wilkes. Thank you so very much for your time. We truly do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Yes, and I hope that when we do call next time, you'll be available for us. Right, thank, thank you so much. Yes, thank you as always for making our time. Yes, and um, Mr. Peters, yeah. thank you, thank, thank you, you. Thank for debuting with us. We truly do appreciate it. Um, Chuma, thank you as so always. Yeah. All right, uh, I would love to say thank you to you. You've streamed, you've watched wherever it is, you've done that around the world. I'd love to say thank you to you. We truly do appreciate the time and promise never to take you for granted. But please do well to see us anytime that you want at enterpriseTVnews.com and also like, comment, and follow us on all our social media platforms at Enterprise TV 7 I am Henry Igwebike. And I'm Choma Okoya. On behalf of the entire team, we'd love to say thank you once more, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.